Starship Frontier. We're ready to start on your signal. Welcome back to the channel. So this is going to be my sort of deep dive into Starfield. I imagine by now you've all seen Starfield. It was shown about a week ago now and you've all had the opportunity to watch it and seen all the comparisons and all the hate it's getting. But I'm going to go sort of more into and just look closely at some of the details and that that we were shown. A game that I have, I'm still very much hyped to play more so because it's ticked a lot of the boxes that I said in my previous video, which I was looking forward to hoping that was in this game. Um, and several boxes that is not ticked, unfortunately, which I may cover. Um, and I'm, I'm going to ignore all the hate in this uh, this video, that's going to be coming in another video, and all the comparisons to No Man's Sky, which is ridiculous. Um, but let's have a look at this, shall we? Let's, let's take a closer look into the details. And they're going to begin with customization. This is one of my favourite parts of these style of games. This is why I play a lot of these games. I love customization. I love just creating my character from scratch and that. This is why I don't really play single player games. I hate playing the character that they give you. Because a lot of times I just don't like the character. So I won't play a game if I'm just if I'm just put off by the, the player that you're playing, basically. I don't want to play him. I don't like his, the way he looks. I don't like his personality. I don't like anything else. I just won't play the game. Um, this, I get to create and be the person that I want to be. The player that I want to be. I get to create my character and stick him into a world and live in that world as that character. Um, I don't play someone else. It's not like watching a film. I actually, when you make your own character, I feel like that you're more taking part in it because you are actually being who you want to be. And this is why I love customization in games. So let's have a look at this briefly. We've got biometric ID, body, face, background, and traits that you can adapt. You can even adjust their sort of their weight or how they look. You can make them fat and change the way they walk, you can give them sort of walking stance. Moving on from that, we've got background that gives you a whole selection sort of, of skills based on your actual background that you used, you used to have, say. Uh, so we've got things like bounty hunter, diplomat, uh, explorer, and each of those sort of backgrounds give you a different skill set, which I think is brilliant. I'm looking forward to sort of going through those and sort of minimizing myself. And then much like Fallout, we have traits which you can sort of select hindrances for your character but they also give sort of little bonuses, so you sort of that's where you can really minimax there. And if that wasn't enough, there's skills, skill sets as well in the game. Much like Skyrim, they've taken this sort of from Skyrim, so you can sort of improve and adapt skills as you progress and level. And then you also got the uh, customization for weapons and gear and costumes and all sorts. This game is massively customised and it's incredible and I cannot wait to get into it. And that takes you nicely into ship customization. Yep, you can completely design your ship. Um, you can even crew your ship. As you go around you can pick up people and they sort of do parts of the ship. Whatever you need to be done on a ship I guess. <laughs> but you basically I imagine you employ people to work on your ship and run it. So yeah, you can customise ship down from well, obviously the colours and you can move around the parts of it and completely sort of remodel it but also there's sort of if you have to look closely at it there's different items for the things and different sort of it, it, you know different brands and stuff like that so you can completely redo the inside and the outside of the ship and create the ship that you want for your character in the world that you're living and making And it doesn't end there, you can also do all that on planets by creating your own base. You can completely develop your own base and just kill it out and stuff. You can starve it as well, put staff on it to run it. And I guess you gather resources and make money which you then buy more parts with and sort of grow your character and expand. 
and you have 1,000 planets in which to do so. Yes, there are 1,000 planets within 100 solar systems. And not all these planets will be probably livable, or there won't be cities and all. I think there's four major cities, and I'm sure the campaign will take you across many of these planets, or there at least we side quests on many of them too. But I mean, there'll be places to gather resources on. You can set up a base on many just to explore. You get to be the pilot, the space explorer that you want to be. And there appears to be an abundance of life on planets. And of course none of this would be possible if it wasn't for space travel and yes you can travel in space. And as Todd highlighted when you customise your ship you can add weapon systems and shield systems and such to it. So inevitably there will be space combat and you will encounter pirates in space that want to loot you and rob you or you rob them. I guess that's how it goes in space. No one can hear you scream. So, um, because the combat looks sort of quite intense, uh, reminds me akin to Elite Dangerous. There appears to be a large variety of sh ships you can encounter. There's even docking, I guess, for resources, uh, equipment, or even fuel. And to round it all off, the game does have very intense ground combat uh, where you're actually on foot, more like an FPS, or I think you can go first person or third person. And with all that, it's all within a massive campaign, much like the Skyrim Fallout games. It's going to be a massive with 200,000 words of dialogue. Unfortunately, there are no mechs, which I originally hoped for. You just got a sort of robot buddy that follows you around and no doubt gathers and collects resources for you. I'm not even sure if it'll do combat for you. Yeah, that's yet to be seen, but I was, was hoping for mechs that you actually ride, but I, at this stage there won't be those. I was also kind of, uh, would have been looked forward to landing the ship and taking it off, much like Elite Dangerous, um, but I can understand why they're not following that, because the detail into this game, I think just adding that in itself would really slow down the pace and take away the detail of the game. I mean, because then they'd have to build in all destruction and things, because no doubt people will be crashing their ships over the place, and they'd have to build in... So the damage and shit would be taken from that and crashing and I think it would just be too much hassle that it's just not worth the time to put into it just to land your ship and I, someone that plays these games has played No Man's Sky and that's played which actually doesn't have takeoffs either it has a loading screen but someone that's played Leap Dangerous it does get tedious after a while when you've taken off from your hundredth planet it does get a bit tedious and uh, that's why they add a skip button into Elite Dangerous so you can just skip that phase and just appear in space which many, I'm sure many do because it does get boring after a while same as first flight sim even you know after a while you've, once you've landed your hundredth plane you just want to be in the sky and you want to fly so it, it loses its, <laughs> it loses its, its um, interest anyway thank you for watching it'd be great to hear in the comments what you think of this what you think of Starfield what are you looking forward to playing what are you missing what do you and did you not enjoy about this show and about the uh, showcase of the game or the game itself? Um, thank you all for watching. Um, enjoying the support that I'm getting right now. And goodbye for now.